What is crime and what is not? What is justice? I think I forgot. Now that's a line from an old Ice-T song, but here's a statistic from a re recent uh, WikiLeaks style dump down in Mexico. Some hackers got a hold to Mexican military documents and the Mexican military itself estimates that 70% of the country directly south of us is not under control of the central government, it's under control of various criminal groups. Some are nar narcos, some are just gangsters, I guess you could call them cartels. Sinaloa has recently completed their total domination of the fish industry, for example, from uh, catching the fish to selling it wholesale to other countries to putting it on plates in fancy restaurants in Mexico City. Sinaloa cartel gets a cut of everything. But today's news is about an American. La Barbie, Edgar Villarreal. And if you remember, he's the guy from Laredo, Texas, who went over the border and at one point was perhaps El Chapo's number one lieutenant on the other side of the border. He was running uh, a paramilitary that was directly fighting um, on behalf of the Beltran Leva organization until they broke away from Sinaloa, directly fighting Los Zetas, uh, who was the existential threat to Sinaloa at the time, just like El Mencho's CJNG is right now, and yet they persist. So El Pais, the country, so a major Mexican newspaper, some reporter typed uh, La Barbie's government name, Edgar Villarreal, into the U.S. Bureau of Prisons uh, inmate lookup uh, recently and saw that it said that he's, quote, not in custody. So that's a big story south of the border because it's a narrative they would like to run with, just like even more so that we, someone like Trump, and people that uh, support that line of thinking blame the problem of drugs on the United States. In Mexico, they blame the violence and the problem of drugs on the United States even more so. And they just, and they have just as, I mean, it's just as likely to be, uh, and it's just as valid, if not more valid, for Mexico to blame us as for us to blame them after all, we are the big brother country. We're the ones with the money, not them. Now, as someone that deals with federal prison inmates, both on a personal level and a professional level, I can tell you just because you look up somebody's name and it says they're not in custody does not mean they were released. Probably means he's in witness protection because he got sentenced in 2018 to like 49 years he told on a lot of people. He tried to tell on more. During the trial, he was, and even while he was in custody in Mexico, uh, fighting extradition here, he was passing notes to Mexican journalists like Annabel Sanchez about him bringing millions of dollars in his role as El Chapo's number one field agent at the time, millions of dollars to people that were very high ranking in the Mexican government at the time. And in fact, he even talked about the person that was Mexican president at the time, which this same stuff came out in El Chapo's trial before him, accepting millions in bribes. And the very person that La Barbie said was his point man in accepting bribes was grabbed in 2020, I think in New York, uh, by the US federal government and tried with accepting bribes during his time in the Mexican government. So nothing La Barbie said about corruption in the Mexican government has shown to be untrue thus far. And uh, it would be a nice story to plant in the Mexican press that the US and La Barbie are complicit in doing something bad to Mexico when in fact, we definitely have the record of uh, La Barbie saying that he was giving bribes to people in the Mexican government who are right now 
charged with it. And I have the links down below to my story about La Barbie because it's a long and winding one. And also his partner, his main partner on the U.S. side, Craig Petty's, who was a uh, black dealer from Memphis who, I mean, kind of probably was bigger than Big Meech. I mean, when, when, when Petty's got indicted, he went and hid in Mexico and lived with La Barbie for several years. La Barbie in 05, the year that Meech and BMF was indicted, he was sending 2,400 keys a month to the United States. In one couple month period of his indictment, he sent a couple thousand keys just to Atlanta alone without ever setting foot in the city of Atlanta. La Barbie was, uh, he was operating at the same time the Flores twins were. And it's funny, El Chapo, uh, the guy who's the most famous Mexican narco over here. Also, his tightest relationships and his biggest dealers were U.S. born Mexican Americans, the Flores twins and La Barbie, who all ended up turning against him and who got famous over here just like El Chapo was. But it makes you wonder, do people like El Mayo or even people whose names we don't hear much about, El Azul and others, do those guys have people that don't even speak English who were born in Mexico sitting in some small town, you know, Fayetteville, Arkansas or something, overseeing the real operations? And people like the Flores and La Barbie are just the American versions of El Chapo, the loud-mouthed face of the cartel that just continues to grow and grow and grow. Sinaloa has grown since El Chapo's incarceration. And despite the so-called um, attempts by the CJNG and El Mencho to usurp power, seems like Sinaloa is, is, whatever everyone else is doing, they're growing too because the drug market is growing. And as the Mexican government gets weaker and weaker, the opportunities to steal fuel, timber, uh, every avocado and lime you buy in the United States, some of that money is going to some cartel. And uh, I don't think La Barbie is free. La Barbie is listed as not in Bureau of Prisons custody. That could simply mean that as it's come out in the press, stories like the story I did and newspaper articles, and his fellow inmates saw that he was you know, trying to give information and did give information. He probably just wasn't safe anymore and he's being put into protective custody. That's usually what happens. Or I mean, that's when, when, when you get put in protective custody, witness protection, they could change your name in there just so no one can find them. So imagine you did a lot of telling on high level cartel operatives. You're in a US prison under your legal name they can, someone can simply type in your name, see like he was at USP Coleman in Florida. They can go try to corrupt a guard or reach out to the family members of inmates serving life that are in there and say, hey, hit this guy, here's some money. And it does happen just like that. So you uh, change his name, put him in a different prison under a different name. Doesn't even have to be witness protection, though it could be. So I'm, I'm, I would imagine that's where La Barbie's at. So it's uh, interesting how the Mexican press is latching on to an opportunity to make it seem like the United States is in league with drug dealers. Now, we are, but we're on a higher level. So people like La Barbie aren't who the U.S. government would work with. La Barbie's bosses, Mexican, well, not his bosses, because that's not really what a, how that works. They're all kind of independent operators doing what they do, but let's just say the people higher in the food chain the generals, the heads of the federal police, the president, the guy Garcia, what's his name, Luna, who's under indictment now, who was, I think, the head of all Mexican police operations. Uh, that's who we allow to operate in exchange for political favors. So La Barbie, despite the news of him being free he's not free but 
the corruption that he talked about and that he referenced to Annabelle Sanchez, the leading mm, chronicler of the way the cartels have totally corrupted Mexico, uh, the corruption he detailed to her and others, has turned out to be true per the U.S. government's own charges. And uh, hopefully this new Mexican president, uh, Albertor Lopez, he appears to be uh, not too corrupt as far as when it comes to the cartel guys. Uh, La Barbie, interestingly enough, as part of the details of what he said happened to him is that he didn't want to participate in the system that the prior president set up, the Pax Sinaloa. So if you remember, there was a lull in the war. So in the, I don't know, around 2008, 2009, 10, 11, there was that war down in Tijuana and Juarez between the Gulf Cartel, uh, Sinaloa, cementing its control against the Gulf Cartel in Juarez and against the Tijuana Cartel in Tijuana. And that led to the huge uptick in violence. And then as Sinaloa settled in as the power, things calmed down. And, and La Barbie's contention was, well, that was all part of the plan with the government. The government wanted there to be one dominant cartel, Sinaloa, so that there'd be less war and less violence, which, depending how you want to look at it, could be smart. La Barbie, for whatever reason, didn't want to play ball or felt caught between a rock and a hard place. Thus, he was given up. He was allowed to be captured. Because remember, these guys are all living out in the open. So when any one of them gets captured, it's because their protection went away. So uh, I don't think LaBarbie's out now, but could get out one day. I'm sure he's always furiously scrambling to try to get some current uh, information that he can trade for freedom now. I doubt if he did that, but you never know. He might just be on diesel therapy. I would imagine they just changed his name and moved him to another prison so that's your narco update i want you to go watch my craig petty's and la barbie stories links below al profit american dope how long was it uh, all right bet. <laughs>